They decided that they were going to set forth and create the baddest motorcycle in existence. Not only would it have unmatched style and performance, but the quality and finish would be only rivaled by companies like Rolls Royce. And let's be honest, these companies don't make motorcycles, so it's unmatched by nobody. They say you should never meet your heroes, unless you're like me and all your heroes are machines. This is the story of the legendary Honda Valkyrie Group. Test driving everything and anything with two wheels to help you find your next bike. I'm Sean Kerr, and this is SRK Cycles. What started out as a concept in 1995 that they called the Zodia, the goal of this bike was to show off Honda's research and development team and let everyone know how awesome they were. The thing looked wild like something out of the future. As you can see, the original design included a V-twin motor, which they later used in their VTX line. It also had a hydromechanical automatic transmission. The Zodia never came into production, but did lead the way for something even better. In the coming years, Honda pumped out a few more concepts, including a few that were made by custom bike builders. They teased three different concepts at the Long Beach Motorcycle Show and paid close attention to how many people gathered around the different bikes. That's how they did it? That's how they did the marketing back then? That, that, that blows my mind that they would choose to spend millions of dollars depending on how many people hung around that certain bike. Concept 1, which they called T1, looked like a slightly modified Valkyrie. Not really any big changes we're talking about. Cool for the 90s, but nothing too exciting. Also, the picture had this classic 1990s school picture photography fuzzy background thing going on. They had two options for the photographs, the fuzzy background and the lasers. They wrongfully chose the fuzzy background. Little did they know, lasers are coming back with a vengeance. Concept 3 was a little cooler looking and a little more wild. The flames in those days were super popular, but although the bike had a 6 into 6 exhaust system guaranteed to burn your calves in 6 different spots, it was still just a bike. If anything, it looked more like a boss hoss, a giant motor with a seat and a tank, which I'm not complaining about that, that actually sounds pretty awesome, but someone already made it when they put a V8 on top of a bar stool. Now concept 4, I'm not even sure why this was even on the list. I feel like Honda did a bad job explaining to this guy what they were trying to do. Honda was trying to flex their end design and engineering muscles. Now put a sports or tank on a Honda Shadow front with a Goldwing motor and a NASCAR tire on the back to pass off for a production motorcycle. I'm not saying it's not a cool bike because I think it is cool and I want one. I'm, I'm looking for buying one right now. But this would be like Ford asking me to design a prototype for a new car and when I bring them this, with a straight face and say, I could see you guys putting this next to the Ford F-150 and trying to sell it while I'm turning around giggling with my buddies. I can't believe they're going to buy this. It was just kind of ridiculous. Now, concept two, this is starting to look like something that I recognize. It was wild. It was huge. It was powerful. But there was no way this bike would ever reach the production line. Because if we know anything about concept vehicles, they never actually hit production. They always get changed. When they showed us this concept vehicle, they gave us this Yamaha FCL7. When they showed us this, they gave us the Honda Rebel. When they showed us this, we ended up getting the BMW R9T. And when they showed us this, we got a Dodge Caravan. How the heck did we get a Dodge Caravan out of that? You would think that the making of the Honda Rune would have been a big team effort where everyone works together for the common goal and they all team up, just like the end of Sandlot. But in reality, it was more like the beginning of Sandlot. Sure. It was an all-out battle between the designers and the engineers. There was multiple reports that the engineers needed to redesign something for functionality, which would take away from the essence of the bike. And the designers were not having it. The radiator was one of those issues. The bike couldn't just look amazing. It had to function at the high standards that Honda put on all their bikes. The engineers said, we need a bigger radiator. The Honda Goldwing that uses the same motor has two large radiators on both sides of it. The designers demanded that the engineers do what they do best, design a better radiator, and they did. Despite the constant battle between engineers and designers, the designers pushed the engineers to put into place the magnificent machine that they dreamt up. The end result was a motorcycle like nothing you've ever seen. Sitting at over 8 feet long, equipped with a liquid-cooled, horizontally opposed 1800cc 6-cylinder. To put this into perspective, 
Here's the chart showing the average size of new passenger cars sold in different countries. The ruin would be right here. At the top, next to Luxembourg, I don't even know where that even is. The Rune took the sensation of flying on a dragon and put it in a motorcycle. The Rune took the sound of dropping the ring into Mordor Throw it in the fire! and put it into a motorcycle. The way the bike delivered the power to the ground could be compared to a jet taking off, smooth and powerful. The front suspension effortlessly worked underneath while your handlebar stayed unaffected. The single-sided swing arm showing off that beautifully designed wheel and the headlight that we'd later find out was from the head of an alien robot. Those are the things that you would normally expect from a Honda. Style, performance, reliability. But normally when you get a little bit closer to the average Honda, you notice that what you thought might have been chrome is plastic. What you thought might be painted metal is also plastic. And this is one of the reasons why Honda is able to make a great bike and keep the cost down and the weight down. But not on this bike. Not only did it weigh 888 pounds, which equals four Honda Grom, but rumor has it that it cost $100,000 to manufacture each one when they only sold it for $25,000. When most companies make a special edition bike, they take a bike that they already have in production and they change a few things, mirrors, lights, or they do a cool expensive paint color on it but not this bike. Although it borrowed the power plant from the Goldwing, it was a completely new bike, only producing around 3,000 of them over 18 months and manufactured in Honda's Maryville, Ohio plant, where they also made the CR250M, Elsinore, the Goldwing, and the Magnus. The fit and finish on the Rune is remarkable. How all the lines flow together, it was function meets art. Functional pieces of the bike that most companies would just take off the parts shelf were made specifically for the Rune. Even the brake master cylinders and controls were chrome and specifically designed for the Rune. All the individual pieces of the front end work as an invisible windshield, making riding the bike windshield less, the way God intended it to be, like a dream. Cruising down the highway doing triple digits with almost no wind hitting your chest. You don't just ride the Honda Rune, you experience motorcycle euphoria. This is not a failed project that they dropped. This was Honda flexing its muscles, showing to the world that not only they could build a truly remarkable motorcycle, like nothing else you've ever seen before, but that they are so profitable as a company that they can build a machine like this that loses 75 grand every time they sell one. The Rune was a pretty big deal, and lots of motorcycle collectors got one to fulfill their own motorcycle collection, including uh, famous people like Jay Leno, Tom Cruise, George Clooney, and Sean from SRK Cycles. Yeah, this handsome fella. There are a few of them floating around on eBay, still in the original crate, with an asking price of around 40 grand. Honda may never use the Rune name again, but in 2014 it continued the Valkyrie name with its Goldwing-powered hot rod bike, and rumor has it they have another Valkyrie to come up in the next coming years. And if all that does not impress you, it's the only motorcycle that I know that comes with its own leather-bound coffee table book. I know, I have one, I read it to my children every night before they go to bed. That's the Honda Valkyrie Rune and everything about it. We'll see you guys later.